Hi, everyone. Okay, so um, thank you very much, Ole, for the introduction once again. Um, augmented and virtual reality. Let me say a few words why I'm interested in this. Uh, so I have to make an, uh, a confession. I used to be a very nerdy child. I grew up with two older brothers who forced me into reading a lot of science fiction literature. So the whole kind of tech topic always resonated with me quite strongly, although I went into a completely different uh, area for my career. But looking at what's happening and what's been happening for the last 18, 20 months in the space of augmented and virtual reality is something that really cannot be ignored if you're passionate about telling stories and about brand positioning. So, very simply said, we have a paradigm shift ahead of us in terms of how we consume media. Um, and that, funny enough, tends to come along with how we actually consume things as well. So if you think about it, we used to have offline boutiques, offline commerce. Along comes the internet and, hey presto, we have e-commerce. Along comes smartphones and suitable mobile bandwidth, and suddenly we have mobile commerce. So what's the next device that's being pushed into the market by manufacturers? Quite simply said, it's augmented and virtual reality headsets. As a first step, we're talking about virtual reality and then augmented reality. I'll come and go into that in a second. The interesting thing is that augmented and virtual reality offer us completely new perspectives on how we can tell stories and how we can present products. Uh, just a few numbers, I know you probably won't be able to read that from back there, just a quick uh, catch up. Basically, 78% of consumers who have tried virtual reality definitely want to try it again. And over 50% of consumers are keen to be able to explore content they see on the internet in a VR environment. There's some forecasts that say that in 2020, there will be over 21 billion US dollars in revenues created from VR hardware and VR content. To be perfectly honest, I think that is a very conservative guess. Um, similar to the forecast that by 2020, there will be over 200 million VR headsets in the market. Samsung just published some uh, numbers and they um, say that they already sold over 5 million Samsung Gear headsets over the last 12 months, basically. So if you think about the fact that also a Google Cardboard, which costs you roughly 10 euros if you don't get it, get it as a goodie at some fashion show or something, that or those are in the market as well. Every single one of us carries a VR-capable device in our pockets because smartphones are essentially just that. So just to be on the safe side, I'll just quickly go into a few um, explanations and definitions of what's what. So we have perceived our perceived reality, our real world. Then we have virtual reality, which is a parallel world which is purely digital which I enter through a VR headset, for instance, which is completely closed off and where I experience that parallel world. At the intersection of the two, we have augmented reality and there's also expressions like enhanced reality and mixed reality. I won't go into the detailed breakdown between these just because it would be a little too time consuming, but let's say we're mixing the real world and a virtual world through technology. Now, with virtual reality, as I said, this is a completely parallel universe. We're talking about a completely different setting. I can sit at home on my sofa and be in an entirely different world. Technology-wise, of what kind of hardware, what kind of gear is in the market and what's actually interesting is the fact that I have a clear divide between gaming-focused hardware which has to have much higher capabilities for pro and processing power, and end consumer gear, which can be operated with a smartphone. It's two different applications, and there's also huge differences in price. Augmented reality, as I said, is mixing the real world with digital content. So in this case, this was a fashion show at New York Fashion Week where you had a real-world fashion show, but if you viewed it through an iPad or through a telephone, you could see lots of digital contact, uh, content layered on top of the catwalk, basically. 
What's interesting about hardware and gear for augmented reality is that, once again, a lot of the hardware is already in the market because tablets and smartphones can act as augmented reality devices. The really interesting thing is going to happen once the headsets come into the market. Here we're looking at the Microsoft HoloLens. Um, I don't know how many of you have had a chance to try this. If you get a chance, I can totally recommend it. It's a pretty funky experience because basically you're standing in the room and you can put a hologram of something right next to you and you can interact with that hologram, for instance. Having said that, until that gets mainstream is still a long way to go but that, because at the moment the technology is still very expensive and producing content for it is expensive as well. So where are we headed? Where are we today and where are we headed? The three horizons of augmented and virtual reality. We already have virtual reality applications and I'll go into some examples in a second. And we already have the opportunity and the possibility of using a device like a smartphone or a, um, a tablet to view augmented reality content. It's quite funny. Until a little while ago, people tended to tell me, yeah, you know, augmented reality, that's not, that won't be in the mass market anytime soon. And now I just turn around and go like, yeah, so have you played Pokemon Go lately? Because that is exactly it. The next step is going to be augmented reality headsets. As I said, that's still quite a long way to go, but it's interesting in the sense that you will have the opportunity to be in your real world and consume digital content at the same time. And a little bit further down the road, we are talking about constant immersion, where we are talking about, for instance, AR-capable contact lenses, which will have serious issues of getting approved to be mass market ready in Europe, for instance. We're talking about projects like Magic Leap that talk about projecting holograms straight onto your eyeball and things like that. So we're talking about future stuff here, but having said that, there are already technologies out there that make this kind of thing possible. So it's just a question of when, not if. I've brought a couple of examples that I want to quickly outline for you. So um, in terms of augmented reality, Marks and Spencer's brought out a t-shirt, a, a series of kids' t-shirts, where if you scan the uh, t-shirt with your tablet, the things or the motives on the t-shirt will basically become alive, and there will be an animation on the tablet visible on top of the t-shirt. And Prada has recently launched an app that I would actually like, like to show. I'll quickly switch to, the, to my iPad screen if I can get this to work. Give me one second. And here we go. This is going to take a second to load, so I'll uh, tell you a little bit about it. Um, this is a, an app that Prada launched with a fragrance, which is in itself a little funny if you think about it. Um, and it's a completely immersive experience if you have it on your, on a, um, on your headset device. Um, I have a Google Cardboard downstairs and a possibility of viewing this, so if you want to come down and have a look in a second, that's... That's fine. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, now I, the, the interesting thing about this is, ah, perfect, I'm already in the right spot. So you're now seeing what I can see on my iPad and which you would also see in the, in the headset. Ah as long as this doesn't lose the connection. Hang on.
So I'll stop this now. As I said, um, feel free to come and have a look at it in more detail in a minute. So thank you very much. Um, now, the thing is with this, it's really nicely done, but it doesn't have a point to it. There's nothing you can do except spend time in that room and watch those animations. The interesting thing is, you can use this for storytelling. You can use this for presenting a collection, for presenting products. I just chose this image to just give you an idea of how could you go, if you think about how retail spaces are designed these days, a lot of them are not just purely a boutique, but they're actually created to make you feel at home, to be Instagram-worthy material, etc. So if you think about where would you present your products if you were completely unlimited in space, in context, and environment, you can start presenting a ski collection on the slope. You can take people for your spring-summer collection, you can take them out into a field, you can start really immersing your customers and your clients, no matter whether we're talking B2B or B2C, you can bring them into another world. And I think that is really the key to what virtual reality specifically is going to be able to do for fashion. Because fashion lives through all that's done in terms of storytelling, all the romancing behind it, all the stories we're telling about where the collection came from, what the inspiration was. Now, to get back down to reality, what does this mean? In terms, if I want to create something in the virtual reality space, I have to think about a degree of interaction which will lead to complexity. The more complex the application is going to be, the more the more interaction I want, the more complex creating this is going to be. And that considers the environment I'm, I'm moving in, the objects I'm showing, and creatures and potential interactions with them in that space. Now, this has been a very brief snapshot. Um, I'm happy to give personal briefings to people with an advanced booking. That's something I do simply because I'm very passionate about this. So if you want to... Um, Take, down, uh, take a note of my contact details or come down and see me after the presentation and I'm happy to discuss what you can do in that space. It's not exactly part of my core business, but it's just something I'm very passionate about, so I enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you.